Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today, we've got an episode of Spare Change. The topics on these episodes can vary pretty widely, so stay tuned to see what's in store for this one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in from the Commander's Quarter Studio. Welcome to the show. So today's topic is going to be blue cards that break the color pie. So in Magic, there are five different colors that make up the color pie, and each of those colors have different strengths and weaknesses, and there are certain things that certain colors do well, and there are certain things that those colors just don't do well or don't do at all, really. And so when a card comes along that kind of jumps outside of those norms, then basically it's breaking the color pie. Maybe a blue card is doing something that usually a red card does, and we're going to go through some specific examples, so let's jump into one really quick. Uh, with Psionic Blast. Psionic Blast is an instant that costs two in a blue, and it says it deals four damage to our creature or player and two damage to you. Now, if you just kind of heard the, the text on this card and didn't see the, the mana cost or anything like that, you'd say, oh, that's definitely a red card. You know, direct damage is always pretty much a, a red card effect. Uh, this coming on a blue card is uh, pretty surprising. Uh, this is something actually that a couple of other blue cards way back when uh, we're actually kind of doing as well. You know, you had certain things that could ping opponents or, or ping creatures, but this uh, definitely, uh, this kind of effect is definitely now pretty much exclusively in red dealing damage. Uh, and essentially, again, Sonic Blast is something you probably won't see too much play in Commander, but it is kind of, it's kind of fun if it actually comes out because, you know, players aren't expecting it to get pinged for four or their creature to get pinged for four by a blue spell. Uh, next up, we've got Dreamscape Artist, which breaks the color pie in a different way. It's a 1-1 human spell shaper that costs 1 in a blue. It has pay 2 in a blue and tap it, discard a card, sacrifice a land, search your library for up to 2 basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Now again, if you didn't see the converted mana cost of this card, or the mana cost of this card, you'd immediately probably think green. Uh, basically, green is the king of ramp. Green is all about ramp. Green is about getting lands into play. Blue really doesn't do that. And this kind of says, you know what, yeah, let's give blue a way to do it. Yes, you have to discard a card and sacrifice a land, but you get 2 lands into play. You know, that, that ramps you, that helps you fix your mana, and that's something that blue just isn't supposed to be good at doing, but this is a, a pretty good way to actually ramp within blue uh, if you're going for land ramp. Speaking of land ramp, uh, there's actually a commander that can actually be very good at it, and again, you can use this commander or in the 99, but that's Patron of the Moon. Patron of the Moon is a 5-4 spirit uh, that has Moonfolk offering, and we'll get into that in a second, that costs 5 blue blue. Uh, it's got flying, and you can pay one uh, to put up to two land cards from your hand to play tap. Moonfolk offering basically just means that you can play it at instant speed if you also sacrifice a Moonfolk. Uh, not really all that relevant, but basically, again, that part that is important is that pay one, put up to two lands from your hand into play tap. So this isn't going to, you know, search for it through your library for those lands. You're not tutoring for those lands. You know, it's not a, a typical kind of ramp spell where you go and get lands from your library, you put them into play. But this does ramp you by getting lands from your hand into play. Obviously, blue is good at drawing cards, so you can have a ton of lands in your hand that you can just get into play with this. One mana to ramp by two is absurd. Again, this costs seven to get out, which is a lot, but once you get it out, this thing can ramp you and just really help you get ahead. Uh, again, not exactly, you know, a, a blue, uh, something you generally see in blue. You know, you might, this is obviously another kind of green effect. Green does have, you know, you can play additional lands or put lands in your hand to play, like a growth spiral kind of effect. Uh, so again, this is kind of uh, less, I think, breaking the color pie than Dreamscape Artist, who is just directly searching for those lands and putting them into play. This is putting them from your hand into play. I still think it's a color pie break, but it's a pretty fun one. Uh, next up is Apprentice Wizard, which is a 0-1 a wizard that costs one blue-blue, and you can pay a blue and tap it to add three to your mana pool, or colorless, colorless, colorless. So essentially, you are basically just tapping this to add two colorless, essentially is what this is. But yeah, so this is a mana dork that costs three and taps for two, and again, this is something that you really only see, I mean, outside of, there's, I believe, one or two colorless creatures that do it, but outside of green, green, again, is kind of king of, of ramp, king of mana dorks, king of land ramp, and kind of pretty much all forms of ramp. But yeah, in blue, now we have this mana dork that can tap for two, and actually, I believe I had this in my original Nezahal deck, 
because again, you want to get Nezzle out as quickly as possible. And this is a fantastic way to help do that. Uh, because again, you just typically don't see a lot of, you know, quick ramp when it comes to uh, blue outside of, you know, the typical mana rocks that you're going to see. Uh, and so, yeah, a mana dork in blue that taps for two is is pretty unique. Uh, and again, yeah, breaks the color pie. I, I still think, you know, if you're comparing them, I guess Dreamscape Artist still breaks it more than the others because it is searching for the lands. But still, when it comes to ramping, uh, these are some some ramp cards that do break the color pie in blue. Next up, we've got False Demise, which breaks the color pie in a different way. Uh, it says, uh, it's an aura that says, when enchanted creature is put into a graveyard, return that creature to play under your control, and it costs two in a blue. Uh, so basically, this is uh, a, a, an aura that you'd probably see in black. In fact, I believe there's a couple of black auras that do essentially the exact same thing, that you gain control of a creature when it dies. A and blue essentially doesn't do this. Blue is the color that says, no, I'll just gain control of that creature when it's in play. The creature doesn't necessarily have to die for that to happen. Uh, but this one says, nope, yeah, let's just stick it on a creature. And then when it dies, it'll come back into play under my control. Um, now, this one, I mean, obviously, Blue Hat does have other ways to gain control of creatures. But again, I think because it does kind of depend on hitting the graveyard, that is kind of that black effect. And that it does break the color pie in that aspect. Again, it's not a huge break because there are other ways to gain control of creatures, but it's still a break. Uh, next up, we've got Phyrexian and Jester. It's a 3-3 beast that costs 6 and a blue. It has imprint. When Phyrexian and Jester enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-token creature. It gets plus X plus Y, where X is the exiled creature card's power and Y is its toughness. So this is just straight up a, a creature removal spell on a creature, kind of. So basically, you know, you, you cast this, you exile someone's, you know, best creature, and you got a huge Phyrexian and Jester. Uh, this, I mean, when it comes to exiling creatures and kind of, you know, targeted creature removal, that's something you more so see in, in black and in white, um, and with exiling effects especially, probably more so in white, uh, although you do see them in black as well. But yeah, again, like, having this, it just doesn't really feel too much like a blue card. When it comes to blue, blue is more so, okay, I'll bounce a creature. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll bounce it back to your hand. Uh, it doesn't really have, you know, that targeted removal for creatures for the most part, especially on a, a creature body that, that kind of is more green than, you know, just have a giant creature, essentially, because of that creature, the exile. Obviously, it's not always going to get huge, but uh, it does, in my opinion, break the color pie. That does seem like kind of more a, a, a black or a white card that when it comes into play, it's going to exile a creature uh, kind of thing. Uh, next up, we've got Psychic Transfer which uh, is not all that great of a card, but uh, it is kind of interesting to actually see that this card was printed because it I think it does really break the color pie. It's a source that costs four and a blue. It says if the difference between your life toll and target player's life toll is five or less, exchange life tolls of that player. So obviously in a format like standard or kind of other formats where life tolls are lower, uh, this is probably going to make more of an impact. Uh, but in commander, it really wouldn't make that much of a difference if, you know, I'm at 30 and someone's at 35 and I switch life tolls. That's not all that impactful. But still, just the concept that a blue card can exchange life tolls is pretty funny. Uh, again, it, when it comes to the color pie, this would definitely be a, a white effect more so, kind of like an axis of mortality where you are switching life tolls. Uh, again, this one does have that requirement. Um, you know, so you probably won't see too much playing commander because of that, you know, five or less life. But basically, it's still just kind of interesting to see that the color pie was kind of broken in this way. I believe this one's from six edition, but still just kind of seeing, you know, the color pie actually kind of uh, it, it was twisted in a way that, you know, it kind of makes sense. You know, I guess flavor wise, if it's a psychic transfer, that does sound blue. But the effect is most definitely white when it comes to life exchange. Um, next up, we've got recall. Recall is a source that costs XX and a blue and says choose and discard X cards from your hand and return that many cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile, recall. So this one I've actually used, I believe, uh, a couple of decks. And it's actually, it's a very good uh, recursion spell for blue because blue doesn't really have too many ways to just recur anything. They do have ways, of course, to recur instants and sorceries. But when it comes to other things, they really don't, they don't recur creatures. They don't recur um lands they don't recur other things outside of essentially instants and sorcery so this can be a fantastic recursion spell uh you are not gaining any card advantage technically because you are discarding cards but again when it comes to this kind of an effect it, it's really kind of more so in green that can kind of recur anything green has you know things like eternal witness or whatnot where you're just getting something back from your graveyard to your hand doesn't matter what it is it's any card that you want and this you know recall says no it doesn't matter that if it's an instant or sorcery you can get whatever you want back and get it right back in your hand so it's an interesting kind of color pie break. Again, uh, the discarding part is probably more so a little on the blue side, but probably on the black side, kind of exchanging kind of one for one potentially. 
But basically, again, this this is just it's more of a green card and you see it in blue and it does have, I think, some use in Commander, uh, which is, I mean, again, I've used in a couple decks and it's been useful. Uh, next up, there's Piracy Charm. And this one is is pretty funny, actually. It's an instant for a blue. It says choose one target creature gains island walk until end of turn or target creature gets plus one plus two minus one until end of turn or target player discards a card. So island walk, that piece is definitely blue, you know, obviously kind of giving in a, a creature island walk. That's a blue thing. Uh, when it comes to giving target creature plus two minus one, that seems like more of a black effect, actually. Um, if, if blue was going to be doing something, it might be able to pump a creature slightly. Uh, it usually doesn't take out toughness uh, at all. Uh, or it's going to be kind of subtracting from power. Subtracting from power is probably mostly what you see when it comes to uh, blue combat tricks. Um, but then the kind of part that breaks Colorfy the most, in my opinion, is that target player discards a card. Being able to play just a blue for target player to discard a card is definitely not something a blue card generally does. If blue is making players discard cards, it's generally also making them draw cards. So, you know, like a wheel effect. You know, everyone draws however many cards, then discards however many cards or whatnot. But yeah, just making a player discard a card is not something that blue typically does. So I think this breaks the color pie in kind of multiple ways. You know, again, that second one, again, subtracting from toughness, and then also, yeah, making player discard a card. So this one kind of breaks the color pie in, in, in a couple ways. Uh, and next up, or, or, or finally, there's Unstable Mutation. Unstable Mutation is an ore that costs a blue, and it says Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature gets plus three, plus three at the beginning of your upkeep. A beginning of the upkeep of Enchanted Creatures controller put a minus one, minus one counter on that creature. So this one to me seems like a, a green or black card, um, but essentially, I mean, probably more so a black card because of that minus one, minus one, minus one, the kind of the downside to it. But yeah, plus three plus three is is a lot uh, for an aura that just costs one. Blue isn't really about kind of auras that really pump and make creatures huge. So an aura that gives a creature plus three plus three is is pretty incredible. Again, there is that downside though, that each upkeep, you're getting a minus one, minus one on that creature. And that just seems more so like a black effect. Kind of, you have that, uh, kind of a, a, a like a, a you can get this power but there is kind of a downside to it coming essentially so yeah that that is to me a color pie break um again I, the thing i think i should have mentioned earlier is that there are certain sets like the kind of the time spiral sets that did a lot more of these kind of i don't know if they're completely intentional but they try to bend uh or maybe even break uh kind of certain uh certain color pie pieces and kind of you can see, I mean, there's definitely some that are outside of those. Uh, you might see a lot more color pie breaks kind of in older cards, although I believe there are still some happening kind of around these days as well. And we'll jump into that probably maybe on another episode, maybe some more recent color pie breaks. But yeah, uh, that's the entire list I've got for today. There are a lot of other blue cards that break the color pie out there. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So comment below on your thoughts on these color pie breaks. But then, yeah, let me know your maybe some other picks on color pie breaks that I didn't bring up in blue. And yeah, I'd love to hear them. So yeah, comment below. And as always, thanks again and have a good one. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who help make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tax. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.